In my recent review of Final Cut Pro on the iPad, one of my largest complaints was the fact that we couldn't take the desktop version of Final Cut Pro and send those libraries over to the iPad. However, the absolute legend, Chris Hawking, who has made powerful tools like B-Raw, Toolbox, and Command Post for Final Cut Pro, has done it again with his Transfer Toolbox application. This video is in no way sponsored, nor do I get any sort of affiliate compensation if you click on the links down below. I am just wildly impressed with what Chris has been able to do in such a short amount of time, and I really wanted to share this with all of you. So in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna make a really basic project. Let's go ahead and drop a bunch of clips down on the timeline using W. We could even shorten one down. We could add in a transition with Command T. Maybe I want to adjust the volume on a specific clip. I'm gonna push R for the range selection tool, click and drag, and then we'll just drop that down. That will add in those keyframes for me. Maybe we wanna add in a title, so I'll push Control T, select that title, write in whatever I so desire. We could scale up the size, we could make it bold, and we could, of course, add in a drop shadow. Now, it is important that you use a font that is already on the iPad. So if you want to install a third-party font, you're gonna wanna make sure to do that before you transfer this library over. It's also important that you only use effects that are found on the iPad version. So for example, we can go into the effects browser and I'll apply the color adjustments effect. We can jump inside of there. We could go ahead and push everything to be super warm just so we can really see that it's working when we get it on the iPad. And one last thing that I'm really excited about is that compound clips do in fact transfer over to the iPad version. So let's go ahead and I'll duplicate this title on over here to the right side and then we can create a compound clip with option G. So now we have a compound clip, a transition, audio keyframes and a title just so we can see how everything works over in the iPad version. So when we wanna send this over to the iPad, what we're first gonna to need to do is select our library. Come on over here to the right hand side and locate your media panel. Right now for me, it says it is in the library. That is where it's going to consolidate the media too. If you haven't consolidated your media, just go ahead and click on consolidate. We wanna go ahead and just include the original media and then we'll push okay. It's gonna say there are no files to consolidate because I've already done this before, but then I'll go ahead and push okay. So now that we have consolidated everything, go ahead and right click on your library and select reveal in finder. From here, we can go ahead and just open up transfer toolbox. It's gonna to bring up this really basic, simple window for you to use. And all you're gonna do is click and drag your library into this window. It does give you important pointers for how your project should be set up. So make sure you read this at the bottom. But then when you're ready, go ahead and select grant access. It's gonna give you this victory pop-up, which will allow us to send this over via SSD or AirDrop. However, you really wanna get it over onto your iPad. Now that everything's set up, we can go ahead and right click on our file and then go down to the share menu. From here, we'll go ahead and select airdrop and I'll send that on over to my iPad. Once the iPad receives the project, it will auto import it into Final Cut Pro. Now all we need to do is go ahead and select edit and in here we can see our complete library. You'll notice that it has our transition that we created, it has our title, and it has our compound clip that we added at the very end. You'll notice there is no title above it. However, you cannot expand this compound clip in any sort of way. It's just there as a singular clip. So just keep that in mind. You'll be able to edit it later when you send this back over to Final Cut Pro on the computer. What's really cool is we can now use stuff like live drawing on this video. So let's go on up to the live drawing and we could draw in whatever we want and then I'll go ahead and push done. So I've just created that live drawing. Let's go ahead and send this back over to the desktop version. So I'll click on the share menu. We'll select Final Cut Pro for the iPad project. We'll select export, and then we can tap on my MacBook. This is going to airdrop it back over to my MacBook where I can go ahead and finish up my editing with all of the powerful tools found in Final Cut Pro on the desktop. I'll just go ahead and double click to open it. It's gonna ask me where I wanna save this. I'll just save it to the desktop and we can jump inside of that library. Everything will be contained as it was before. It still has that compound clip that we added earlier, but it also has the live drawing that we did on the iPad, which is really, really powerful. We can click on that live drawing go inside of the generator, and we can adjust how long it takes for that to draw on. You'll also notice that it still maintained the keyframes that I made earlier to the volume, 
even though we couldn't adjust those directly in the iPad. So a lot of the stuff that you do originally on the desktop version will still copy back over from the iPad version without any changes. So you can feel confident that your edit isn't getting totally messed up by doing this. So with all of that being said, there are some severe limitations with Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So that means that not everything from the desktop version is going to transfer over perfectly. If you apply any sort of third party plugins onto this transfer, you're gonna have issues when it gets to the iPad. So keep that in mind. Maybe disable those effects before you send it over to the iPad, or just know that they will show that the clip is missing on your edit. I highly recommend that you read all the requirements for this to work perfectly by checking out the website that I'll have linked down below. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing the like button, consider subscribing, and you may want to check out this video, which is my full 55 minute complete guide to Final Cut Pro on the iPad. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.